Okay, so uh, in this video we're going to talk about the anesthetic record. Uh, and so in the operating room you've probably seen this sheet with the red border on the side. Uh, this is the front page of the sheet. This is the pre-anesthesia evaluation. Uh, so we're going to do a little introduction to this sheet because this kind of forms the, you know, a summary of the core of what anesthesiology is about really. So these forms get filled out for for everybody and on the back of the sheet there's an anesthesia record where you monitor things throughout the operation but this is the pre-anesthetic evaluation. This gets filled out for everybody but as you may or may not have learned not everyone gets seen in the anesthesia consult clinic uh, which is on the first floor of the Pattison Pavilion. Those patients tend to be much more complicated. They have anesthetic concerns that need to be addressed preoperatively by an anesthesiologist and assessed for these concerns and what the best way to proceed is. Uh, most patients fall under the category of not needing this, this anesthesia consult and so they show up, they're, they're evaluated independently first by a nurse over the phone for some of their medical history and there's, you know, surgeons tend to flag patients they think will be more complicated. Uh, and flag them for the consult clinic. Um, but most patients show up the day of the surgery having been booked in without having actually been seen by an anesthesiologist. And so before the surgery we need to go and make sure that given the patient's history they don't have concerns that will preclude them from having surgery that day from having anesthesia because ultimately in the operating room the patient is under your care. Uh, which is a, a concept that's important to understand in terms of the interaction between the team in the operating room. So when you go to see your next case in the preoperative care, they will have this sheet there with them. If they, had been, if they have been seen in the anesthesia consult clinic, this front page of the sheet will have already been filled out by the staff anesthesiologist who was seeing them in the the consult clinic and there will be a report that has been generated from that consult that should also be in the patient's chart. Um, if they haven't been seen in the consult clinic, the sheet, the form will still be there but it won't have been filled out by anybody. It'll be completely empty and, and then it's yours to take notes with as you see fit and that's what we'll kind of go over with this video. And so the video will serve as an introduction to the sheet and as an introduction to a bit of a brief pre-anesthesia history and physical from the medical student's perspective. So let's see if I can zoom in here so we can see it a bit better. These things are fairly straightforward. Date is obviously the date that the surgery is going to be taking place. This is your staff anesthesiologist um, and then the planned procedures. And so when you when you go and see the patient often it's useful to spend five to ten minutes reviewing their chart before you actually sit down and have this chat with them. Once you get really good at it, then you can kind of go in a little more blind, but often it's useful to get a kind of a sense of their history and kind of why they're having the procedure they're having that day and, and if it's related to any operations they've had in the past. Um, so when you go chat to kind of, when you go start chatting to the patient, um, usually you kind of begin with have you had any surgery in the past and if so have you had any problems with anesthesia and obviously you tick yes or no here and if it's yes then you you detail what those problems were um, you know in a case like malignant hyperthermia then that's kind of a big deal but if they were you know a little nauseous after the procedure then you know there are things you can do to kind of counteract that and and be prepared for that you can move on to now kind of more specific points in the history like do they smoke, uh, do they drink much, are, you know, how's their exercise level, are they kind of fit, petite, thin person or are they, you know, a large, obese person. These things will affect um, the drugs that you use to, to, to keep the patient comfortable throughout the operation and they'll affect, um, you know, your intubation of the patient and your care of the patient post-operatively as well. Um, are they an aspiration risk? So do they suffer from heartburn a lot? Do they have lots of stomach problems? Um, have they ever aspirated in the past? Uh, do they have any respiratory problems? So, you know, you're going to be breathing for this patient. You need to know what kind of a state their airways and lungs are in. So do they have a history of asthma? Do they have COPD? How is their lung function? 
Um, do they have any cardiovascular problems, things like anemia? Is there a potential that you know we're going to be need, needing to give this patient blood when you know if it's a if it's a quite an invasive procedure? Um, there may be a lot of blood loss. If they're already low on blood, then that just compounds that. Um, do they have a history of seizures or fainting? Any history of other heart problems like previous heart attack? Surgery is a stressful situation for a patient to be in, so understanding what kind of state their heart in is obviously important for us to be aware of. And in light of all this history, you want to go over the medications that the patient is, is taking. This, this should be in their chart and they should have been um, notified as to which medications they, uh, they shouldn't have taken the morning of the surgery uh, to make sure it's out of their system. So, you know, things you want to be aware of are, for example, if someone's on heparin or warfarin, uh, ha has their dose been stopped in time? For example, if they're getting an epidural, has their dose been stopped a couple days before to make sure that they're not at risk of bleeding into the into the uh, epidural space. Um, and so you want to go through and record all the medications that they're taking so that your staff anesthesiologist is aware and that we make sure they're in the right state to have the uh, surgery. And then you kind of want to go over their, their allergies. Um, and so often in, often in surgery we give patients antibiotics, so you want to make sure that they're not allergic to any of the antibiotics we're going to be giving them or any of the other drugs that we're going to be giving them. And of course, always make sure you differentiate between an allergy and a sensitivity. So, um, you know, ask the patient what happens if they were given penicillin, for example. Do they just get a little bit of a rash and some nausea or do they break out into anaphylaxis? And then you want to kind of start your physical exam portion of this chat that you're having with the patient. Uh, so get a sense of their height and weight. This is something that you can either take off the chart or ask the patient themselves. The pulse ox and the, all the other vitals, you'll get a sense of when you get into the operating room with the patient, but you know if the patient's clearly tachycardic um, or bradycardic or if they're tachypnic, seriously, then that's something you maybe want to make a note of. Uh, and then along with the lab values, you're going to be monitoring a lot of these throughout the procedure if it's a long involved procedure uh, and one where the patient is hemodynamically unstable. Um, so as long as you've got the chart with you and you can, you know, you, the patient has some baseline values, you're going to be okay. You don't necessarily need to copy them all right away. It's something you can do during the procedure. Um, but if the patient has a specific concern related to potassium or sodium or like like we were talking about earlier anemia or something like that then it's good to kind of jot it down um, but from a physical perspective you want to make sure that you check out the patient's airway and how difficult they're going to be to intubate because obviously that's an important thing to do when we put a patient to sleep because we're going to be breathing for them so we want to make sure that we've got their airways nice and secure um, and there's different things we can do ahead of time if we know that their airway is going to be difficult. And those will be covered in future videos. And so what, what you need to do is get the patient to extend their neck and open their mouth nice and wide. And you're essentially kind of circling whatever their throat looks like from this perspective. This is called a Malampati score. And this is a one, two, three, and four. Uh, in increasing levels of difficulty to intubate. Uh, so obviously if you can see the back of the oropharynx there, um, you get nice um, delineation of the uvula. Um, you can see the soft palate edit, see the soft palate elevating. The tongue comes out nice and far, opens up nice and wide. That patient's going to be much easier to intubate than, you know, a malampati 4, for example, where you really, you know, you just get a congested mouth really here is kind of all you're seeing. You don't get any any definition of the uvula, that, that kind of thing. And this is kind of a, you know, you, you get a sense of it the more that the more you do, you'll get a sense of how easy a patient is to intubate. So you get them to extend their neck back and open their mouth nice nice and wide. And in the same position you measure what's called the thyromantle distance, which is how many fingers can you fit in between the top of the thyroid cartilage and essentially the patient's chin. Um, and as long as you can fit 
two or more fingers in there, that's considered normal. Um, and then you can have a quick listen to the patient's chest and, and heart. Um, just, you know, a cursory look um, to make sure there aren't any obvious abnormalities. Uh, and cursory in the sense that if they had any abnormalities, you should have picked it up on the history um, and it should be in their chart uh, if they have any serious respiratory or cardiovascular abnormalities. Uh, but you just want to check and make sure. And then also on history, you could do, um, depending on what's going to happen to the patient during the procedure itself, if they're going to have an epidural, um, you can have a feel along their back to assess how easy or difficult placement of the epidural line would, would be. Uh, and that just about wraps up the physical exam. Like I was saying before, lab values you can kind of get from the chart. You can copy them down if you want, uh, and, but just to ensure that the patient has a baseline. Uh, you can also look and see if the patient has had an ECG. And if there were any abnormalities noted, you could indicate that here. The rest of this is kind of up to your staff in terms of how they like to fill it out. And we're not going to discuss it in detail here. The ASA is just a general classification of disease, so attempting to categorize patients into um, different levels of disease, which your staff can explain to you. And yeah, so now we'll move on. If, yeah, if you have any final comments, you can kind of just place them here. Uh, there should be lots of room on the sheet to make notes of anything that you see fit. Yeah, we'll move on to the anesthesia record now.